Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we are jumping back on Elsa, our 1974 Volkswagen transporter bus. We are doing a Subaru swap on this bus, um, but we're still doing a little bit of research as far as the wiring harness and ECU needed for our EJ25D, the dual overhead cam uh, Subaru engine. So this week we're gonna be jumping into our steering. Now if you remember when we did our shifter, I'll make sure to put a link up above for that video. When we restored our shifter, um, and then we also put in a flex coupler on the steering. Um, that thing was completely shot. I'll also make sure to put a link up for that um, up above. And then um, you just remember how our steering was just completely trash. I mean, that thing was driving like crazy all over the place before you get any response out of these wheels. So we're gonna be replacing about 95% of all those steering parts. We've already done the, the rag joint coupler. So that's already taken care of. Um, but we've also got a box full of goodies here. We've got tie rod ends, left and right hand thread. We've also got our drag link. Oh, this is our, our tie rod, one of our tie, a whole new tie rod assembly. We've also got, this is our drag link. We've got a new drag link as well. Um, and we've also got all new shocks, one on each corner. I know suspension is not steering, but I still want to put these on because we're still missing one shock on this side, on the driver's side. And our front ones are definitely worn out. Our other one that's on the back is completely worn out, stretched out, horrible. And I really want to see what this is actually going to ride height relatively close to what it's going to look like once we put the engine in it. So we're going to toss those in as well as a bonus installing those new shocks. So let's hop underneath it, see what we're working with and why we're going to replace this in the first place. All right, so we're ready to jump underneath this thing. We brought our special limited edition padded creeper to crawl up underneath this thing. So first things first is right out of our steering box. We do have a little bit of a leak, it looks like. Maybe because that seal is away from the, the box there. But then you can see how awesome our tie rod uh, end is on there. Drag link tie rod, you know what I'm saying. And back there, it is completely shot as well. And then if we move farther back, we've got more here. And those are also just completely gone. So we're going to be replacing those right there. I also see we've got to replace this. That's pretty bad. Oh, great. All sorts of suspension goodness on there. So, but... Today, the only suspension we're touching is the shocks. We still have to order those. Those look super fun to get off. Can't wait to do that. All right, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is remove the cotter pin that's holding in this castle nut for our front uh, end here. Man, that thing is so gone. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. But we're gonna remove this cotter pin. We don't wanna touch this yet because we wanna get our new one to be identical to this to minimize the amount of work we're gonna to have to do for adjusting it back in place. So we're gonna remove this split pin, cotter pin, cotter key, whatever you call it, out of here. Now we're gonna remove it with a 19 millimeter. Um, I've got these like added Stevie Wonder welded on tow hooks on the front. They're still welding stick on it so you know that's a really good job i think i'll be able to maybe not gotta get my long one that's what she said <laughs> all right we're back Got that castle nut out, and I'm really hoping this isn't a tapered seat, so that way that'll just pop out naturally. Well, let's. Uh, there's another cotter ring pin on the back. So on the back side of it, there is another one. This cotter pin here in the castle nut. We're gonna get that one removed. Also, we're gonna squirt this down with some lube, and then get a 
hammer and see if we can tap it out. We don't have to worry about damaging the threads considering that we have a whole new setup. If you are going to resave yours and just put new ends on it, um, you know, don't worry about that. You can always put the cast on it out, have more surface area and tap it up that way, but we're not going to be saving this. A few moments later. So we've got that drag link out. You can see it's a good match. It's even got the same crimping pattern on this side. But we're going to try our best to line that up where it's pretty even with each other, where the ball joint is. There, looks pretty good to me. And on this side, it's a little bit different style. So this new one has just a locked nut, like a jam nut, and threaded um, nylon bolts, which I prefer much more. I think they hold a little bit better than castle nuts. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get this, it's still warm, I had to use some heat and some hammering if you couldn't tell. But we're gonna get this pretty close to the same um, position as this. I'm not gonna count necessarily on the threads. You can do that if you have like an OEM style, but on this one, I want it to be pretty centered up to where it already sits. And once we get this adjusted, we can lock down this nut and hold it in place and we can reinstall it. All right, back under we go. We've got our drag link if I can get a grip here, basically where it's the same length, right? Yes, it does go through here. I'm gonna set the back in first. Kind of. Really hard with one hand, just heads up. And then the other one is basically right there. So we're going to put these in because I'm gonna need both hands. And I don't want to damage the threads, and then I'll bring you right back. With two hands, that was much easier. But I know I did it pretty close because it's lined up perfectly straight. It's The post is centered. It's not off to the side already. Same thing with the back. It went in perfectly straight down, so I know my alignment is basically where it was originally. We're going to grab this, and we're going to suck it in a little bit. That works. Yeah, that is much better. No movement at all. And already feels better. Now let's see if just that fixed our steering. But, I mean, we're gonna continue anyway, but let's see how it turned out. I just remember, this thing was really sloppy. Oh, don't want the door to fall on me. Oh yeah. Instant response. Instant response, so good. Oh God, it's so good. Mm. Mm, so good. Much better. So now we're gonna be moving on to those tie rods. Um, one of them is actually stationary. It doesn't have any adjustment at all. That's why we've got one that's already pre-assembled. It's kind of crimped in place and that's on our driver's side. And our passenger side is our adjustable one, which is why we have a left hand and a right hand tie rod end. So what we're gonna be doing is hopping underneath here. We're gonna knock those loose, get the old ones out and replace these. Um, we're gonna take some heat, uh, some PB blaster, a hammer, um, see if we can get it to pop out because these are a little bit of a tapered fitting. And so sometimes I like to get stuck. So we're gonna hammer away, make a mess, loud banging noises, you know, the stuff that's not fun to edit. And we're gonna get these out. First things first, let's get on the driver's side and get our full assembly, uh, fully assembled, non-adjustable one installed first. All right, so we're gonna see if we can do it with the tire on actually, cause those are torqued on pretty tight and I don't wanna bring it all the way back down to redo it. So we've got another castle nut with a cotter pin and you can see this thing is just completely shot. So we're gonna get the cotter pin out. I think this is a 19 millimeter. And then we'll get our pickle fork in here or we'll have to heat up around the tapered slot for the tie rod that it sits in. And we'll be able to pop that out. And then we're gonna go to the middle over here where they come together. There you go, now you can see. Where they come together, castle nuts, cotter pins, pop them down. You can see how you can replace just the tie rod ends. So you've got one that's fixed and then there's one that's adjustable. So that's why I've got one of each, one that has the adjustable and one that's fixed. Uh, so I've got one of those. So 
We're just gonna take out the cutter pins, take out the castle nuts, hammer them down, get them out. Make sure our one that has the adjustable ones on it is um, just the same length. Make sure we're nice and square. And then we'll put in our other one. The first things first, we're gonna put in this one that is on the driver's side, the one that's solid that doesn't have the adjustment on it. You can see it's got some crimps on there so it doesn't move on us. So we're gonna do this one first. So this is the one that we took out first. This is our stationary one. You see there's no adjustable clamps on it or anything like that. And you see just how shot this one was as well. We did have to take some heat to it to break it free of that tapered angle, but that one's finally done. Don't need that anymore. Now this one we do have to keep. This is the one where we have our loose tie rod ends. One and two. Now what we're gonna do is there's some 13 millimeters here. I believe that's what these are. And we're going to count the threads or you can uh, take like a silver Sharpie and mark it and then count once you pull it out. But I like to clean it up. I've got a wire wheel ready. I'm gonna clean it up, count the threads on each side and that should take care of aligning it when we put it back in there. So now that we've got it out and clean and that nut off, I just spread this gap on here so it weighs a little bit of rim to move. But we've got, so when we're looking at it here, this is how it was. Facing up, we've got one, two, three, four, and then it looks like five, but it's really like the thread that makes the neck of it. So we've got five there. And I'm gonna need some sort of lock and plier to get this thing off because this is encased in there now at this point. So five, four plus the end cap. So, oh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to um, put this in the vise because I can't hold that. It's pretty tight. So we've got in the vise with a little bit of heat and a little bit of PB blaster, we've been able to Oh, take it out. Now I'm definitely doing these one at a time because I don't want to get it flipped and crisscrossed about which one's which. So I definitely want to take my time on this. Make sure we don't lose track. Oh, it's really hot. Don't touch that. It's hot. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. That was in there. Huh. Before I put the next one in, I'm gonna shoot some juice down in there. Hopefully it'll help clean up a little bit of the gunk out of the threads. We'll grab our first tie rod end. There is a left hand thread and a right hand thread. I don't remember which one is first here in front of us. So we're gonna have to compare. So to loosen it, we brought it towards us. So to tighten it will be away from us. You could also put a dab of anti-seize on there um, in case you have to adjust your steering later. It's probably a good tip to put some on there. If you live in like the rusty areas, places like that. We're gonna get this puppy down in here and leave out four threads plus the end, so five should be sticking out. It was facing, well, what was up. I think that's good right there. We're going to lock it down for now, and we can always make an adjustment when we get in there. Okay. 
All right, so we're able to put in the other tie rod, our original one, the one we just worked on, the castle nut, cotter pin, and the nylon nut on top. This is all taken care of. Our wheel is a little in, so we'll have to do a adjustment in the future for an alignment, but it's good enough for now, and it is all put together here. So it's already so much better. Now let's see how our steering feels. All right, so just putting in that center link um, for our steering made all the difference as far as response, but I really think, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, baby, yeah! That's the good stuff. She's like, super stiff. And the response at the wheel is so good. Instant. No delay, anything like that. Just a little bit from the given the tie rods and the center link, but man, what a difference. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this episode, and we are dirty. And I think that's an understatement, so shower is much in order. I know we said we're going to do the shocks. I know we said we're going to do them, but I think we want to do another episode on that just because I want to measure ride height before and after when we add the new shocks from our old shocks and see if it really makes any ride height difference without the engine in it still. Of course, when we add the engine in the future, that'll drop it down. But the important part is our steering isn't like garbage anymore. It'll actually respond and I just, it is just so good. And I just, it's amazing what not worn out parts will do for your car. So it's just, I'm, I'm so satisfied, so happy. And uh, I'm glad we had all those parts come in. It really makes a difference. Again, we're still doing research on that Subaru engine for, East, for the CB, uh, the ECU, and for the wiring harness. I think I'm coming close to finding out exactly what I need to do and sources to find those parts. So that should be coming soon, hopefully. Cross your fingers. We just need to keep doing some more reading. And then we'll jump into that. I know a lot of people are starting to get excited for that. So make sure you guys are tuned in. Make sure you guys are subscribed. That really does help the channel. We do still have some shirts and some drink sleeves available. I'll make sure to post a uh, link down below uh, for my email. You just send me an email at garagetimetv at gmail.com and we can get you set up with those. The drink sleeves are five bucks and the shirts are 15. We've only got medium, extra large, and large left. Um, so those are still available uh, to help support the channel so we can continue to get this bus on the road and get a little bit further down the road and actually running with an engine. You know, that'd kind of be nice. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see you.